Hello and welcome to Mage Knight in about 3 minutes. It is a game for 1 to 4 players. It has a very good solo mode. Its playing time is about 2 to 3 hours. Mage Knight is a very complex game. Mm. So complex I'll barely be able to touch on all the systems in 3 minutes. In Mage Knight you are a powerful wizard on a quest. Your objective is to raise some cities and gain power and infamy along the way. You will fight monsters, learn magic, gain powerful abilities, discover artifacts and even raise an army. Mage Knight can be played competitively or cooperatively. Card Management Each player has a deck of cards that represent their abilities. Almost all actions in Mage Knight are card driven. Character Development This game has many ways to improve your character, from buying spells and abilities with influence, to recruiting armies and gaining loot, through to leveling up and gaining extra abilities. Winning the game There are several scenarios in Mage Knight, but the most common way to win is by destroying cities. Cities are very tough encounters that require either a very well-tuned and experienced mage to defeat, or in some cases, a group of them. Player turn. See if it is day or night according to the scenario. Day and night determine which initiative cards are used for that turn and has an impact on movement and how mana is used. Roll dice for the source. This is a collective resource of mana that players share. Select an initiative card. Yellow for daytime and black for nighttime. Draw cards as shown on your character icon. This starts at 5. Play cards to move, attack, recruit using influence, and other special effects. Cards will have a numerical value telling you what they do. For example, this one is influence 2. They will also show a colored icon. This is the effect you can use if you power the card with mana from the source or crystals from your inventory. Doing so makes this card influence 4. Adding the red card increases the combined influence to 6 allowing the player to purchase a 5 cost unit. If the player had 1 red mana, they could boost the total influence to 9 and buy any of the cards. Cards can also be played sideways to add 1 to any value. You play cards and move, fight and explore, until you either pass or run out of cards. Then you redraw your hand to full unless your deck is empty. Once all players have passed, the game proceeds to the next day or night. There is a lot to Mage Knight, such as combat, encounters, wounds and healing, but to give you an idea of its complexity, here is my play of cards for taking out a low level city. Why would you like this game? Mage Knight is frequently voted the best solo game on the market by board game fans, and it's not surprising. The game is a deep and complicated puzzle that will never be solved the same way twice. Timing, planning, card and resource management, and some audacity is required to excel at the game. If you want to be challenged mentally and play a game that rewards analysis and problem solving, Mage Knight could be good for you. The single best thing about the game is the city sieges at the end. In order to win them you have to be well prepared and when that plan comes together it is very very satisfying. But there are reasons you might not like this game. It's exceptionally complex and there is less of a learning curve and more of a learning clip. It is a game prone to analysis paralysis and overthinking by some players. In certain groups that could lead to a lot of time spent waiting for someone else's turn to finish. The theme is also thin. For a fantasy adventure game it's light on adventure elements. If you're looking for a fantasy romp full of encounters and action, Mage Knight might not be for you. For another brain burner that requires a lot of thinking, I recommend Spirit Island. For a much lighter, more story-driven game with character development, exploring, and encounters, you could try Fallout. 